If I could have um, some of our children's teachers, uh, school teachers, uh, you know, Andrea, our, our, some of our, uh, Pastor Jeff, uh, let's see, pa- Pastor Mark, if you'd come join me up here, and Arlene, Kim, I'm sure you all join me up here. And we're going we're gonna to pray over the children of this church as they do go back to school. And I've placed this in your bulletin, and um, it's, it's in the sermon notes. And uh, this is a, just a prayer that you may want to pray on a regular basis for your children and grandchildren. And this is all based on Scripture. And you could take this bulletin, stick it in your Bible, and every day when you hopefully read your Bible, you pray this over your kids. And you don't have to pray just this, but this is a good start, especially if you don't know how. And it goes like this, Lord, I ask you to bless them, and you can put their name in there, in spirit, soul, and body. I bind every work of evil against them. I declare they are favored by God with their teachers, classmates, and all in authority. I declare they have an aptitude for every kind of learning, including wisdom, knowledge, skill, and understanding. That was David Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They had that kind of aptitude. I declare they are beautiful and healthy. I declare they have a tender heart toward the things of God. They are submissive to the word of God and to their parents. They choose their friends wisely. And I ask you, God, to surround them with your friends you want them to have. Lord, I pray you keep them from evil. Watch over them and give your angels charge over them. They will be healthy and prosperous all the days of their lives. Jesus, you made them. I give my child to you for your purpose and the will in their life. I pray even now you are preparing them to be with the mate you have chosen and in the timing you've chosen. And Lord, help me to be the parent to this child. Help me to love them, discipline them, train them, and be the parent you've called me to be. Amen. And folks, if you pray that over your kids, it will produce fruit. And I'll just share this before we call them up. <laughs> Look, <laughs> no secret, I'm a product of a teenage pregnancy, okay? And my mom didn't have a a theological degree, you know, she just did the best she could, and, and, uh, and she, I think she did pretty good, actually, (laughs) (laughs) but, you know, there was never a day in school, never was I allowed, and she would make the school bus wait, but there was never a day that I went to school where my mom did not pray with me, and she did not pray a theologically accurate prayer. She did not pray a prayer that was in King James English. She prayed a very simple prayer. Lord, and she calls me Matthew. Don't you dare call me Matthew. No. (laughs) She calls me Matthew. Lord, she prayed very simply. I give Matthew to you. I ask you to keep him safe to and from school. Give him favor with his classmates, favor with his teachers, and help him to do well. Amen. And I did not get out the door, nor my sisters, without that prayer being prayed. And once again, we would miss the bus if we have to. But that prayer happened. Parents, we're going to pray over your kids today. Please don't let them out the door without praying over them. And, and not, not just a mom thing. Make it a dad thing. And dads, I, I can't encourage you enough. Be vocal. And we talked about this in our men's night Friday night. Just be vulnerable. You're not going to be a perfect prayer. I pray pretty good, and my kids still make fun of me. Okay? So um, let's lay our hands on our kids and pray over them on a regular basis. So that being said, if I could have, we're going to call up kindergarten through sixth grade. If you'd come up here, kindergarten through sixth grade, we're going to pray over you. And send you back to school, not just in style, but in Christ. Amen. Come on up, guys, and go grab one. Sit in front of one of these folks here. Now, we seem to be missing a tall, blonde-headed fifth grader. Oh, how did she get in the balcony? Oh, boy. Huh. She asked permission, and you gave her permission. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're still coming. Come on down, guys. Mm-hmm. 
Come on up. And kids these days, it, it, it's been said, and I believe it's true, they fight more on the, when they go to school as far as temptation goes than their grandfathers did when they went out on Friday night looking for temptation. And uh, I think so. Kids, here's what we're going to do. Every, make sure every kid, you, you two on the end there, come on in. And I want someone laying hands on every child. Does every, everybody have a, can I, let's see. All right. Here we go. You guys ready to pray? You guys ready for school? Yeah. We're going to be, right? You have to be. Okay. Let's pray. We're going to pray over you. Here's the deal. I'm believing God. It's going to be your best school year ever. Okay? Now, some of you that are in fifth and sixth grade, I would never want to go back to those years. Okay? Those are tough years. But we're going to believe that God's going to be with you and help you. And there's those of you that maybe struggle with a subject. You know what? God created you and he created your brain. And he can help you with your brain. Now, sometimes you're not good at one subject because you're really good at another one. Okay? And that's just how God created you. All right? But we're going to pray that you do well. And I'm going to pray kind of how my mom used to pray over me. Okay? You ready? All right. So, Father, I come before you right now and I pray over these precious love ch these, these children. And as they go back to school, we give them to you. These are your kids. You created them. You made their DNA. You formed them in the womb. You've given them vocations and callings. We ask right now for favor with their classmates, favor with their teachers. I ask you to help them to have aptitude for every kind of learning, including wisdom, knowledge, skill, and understanding. Help them to do well. I pray you would bless the work of their hands, bless their homework, bless their studies, help them to pay attention. Lord, for those that enjoy sports or other things besides just the reading, writing, and arithmetic, Lord, we pray you bless their hands in sports, you bless their hands in musical endeavors, bless their hands in art endeavors, bless their hands in every type of learning and education. I ask you to bless their friendships, keep them from evil, help them to make wise choices with their friends. Lord, I pray you sever relationships in their life that would cause them to go down the wrong path. I pray, Lord, you bring the right people in that will surround them with your goodness and that will help them to live for you. I pray, Lord God, that parents are going to have the wisdom to be the parents they need to be. Give the, Lord, give their teachers wisdom. I pray the whole classes they go to, the schools they go to, are blessed because they're there. I pray for protection over these schools. I declare no gun shootings, no bullying in the name of Jesus. We declare no bomb threats, none of that junk in our schools in Jesus' name. These kids are safe and protected, and I plead the blood of Jesus over them. And I declare they're growing in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, and like Jesus, they're growing in favor with God and favor with man. And I pray you make, Lord, this the best school year they've had to date. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right, kids, we love you. You can be dismissed. The Kids Church in Vertical, God bless you as you go. You guys stay up here. because we... I did dismiss Vertical. If you got to go, you got to go. All right. And then if that being said, if I could have my high schoolers up here, grades 9 through 12. And just, they just can't wait to come up and be in front of everybody. <laughs> seventh and eighth, too. Seventh and eighth. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Andrea. Seven, grade seven through 12. <laughs> Come on up here, y'all. Do you guys ever notice, like, when we get, when we get like, a one-year-old that... Uh, we, we, we take a, a new kid and we say, like, you know, we want them to hurry up. Oh, look, they're talking. And oh, look, they're walking. And then you get to be teenagers and everybody tells you to sit down and shut up, right? Uh, well, well, thank you for coming up here today. And I know I see we got some seniors here. We got some, some seventh graders here and everyone in between. The late bus just came in. You guys, I, I, you've heard me say this before, but the word teenager in the Latin literally means age of pain. Literally, age of pain. And uh, it's not easy to be you. And we all know it. And I know some of us people, we're old, and, and you might not like our music. You might not like how we dress, whatever. 
But I want you to know, son, all these folks out here, they really, truly do love you. They really do. And, and our biggest desire for all these people out here, the biggest thing we want for you is we want you not to make the same mistakes we made. And we want you to do better than what we've done. And that's with your, you know, with your careers, your vocation. Because we, we old people, we've made some mistakes. And some of us made mistakes in school. Uh, some of us made mistakes with relationships. Some of us made mistakes with finances. Some of us made mistakes in our education. And so when, when, I, when I'm up there preaching, I'm not, I'm not trying to preach at you. I don't ever want to preach at anybody. When I'm up, whether I'm preaching and teaching or, or these folks are giving you a kind word and advi of advice that you want or don't want, <laughs> it's never designed to hurt you. This church, this is one of the most loving churches I've ever set foot in in my entire life. We're not a perfect church, but we are going to love you and stand with you. And we understand that the generation you're in, it's tough. I get that. I'm, I'm never, I'm, oh, I won't say never, but I will do my best never to make fun of you for being a millennial in Jesus' name. Okay? But don't make fun of me for being a grumpy old man either. <laughs> but we're here to love you. I'm going to pray for you. And some of you are seeking direction for college and career. Some of you are just trying to get through junior high without having all your self-esteem drained down the, out the bathtub or whatever. Let's believe God, and this is going to be an awesome year, that you're going to know your identity in Christ, that you're going to have a great year, have good friends, and that you're going to know and hear his voice. Okay, so let's pray. So Father, I lift these wonderful young people up. And Lord, I think almost every one of us in this congregation would truly say we would not want to trade places with them. Lord, it's tough to be a young person. Jesus, you were tempted in every way. And Lord, you had every bad thing happen to you that could happen to somebody. And Lord, if anybody could say you understand them, you can. And so Lord, I pray right now that we cast all of our cares upon you, the cares and anxieties of boyfriends and girlfriends, the cares and anxieties of our future, the cares and anxieties of trying to get, do well in school and keep up, the cares and anxieties of trying to do well with our parents, the cares and anxiety of sports and extracurriculars like art and music. We ask right now, Lord, that you just come on these kids. And I pray for favor with their classmates and favor with their teachers. And I pray for protection over their high schools. I pray no bomb threats. I pray no gun incidents, no knife incidents, violence-free areas in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray this would be a generation that helps us to defeat bullying and name-calling and those type of things. But at the same time, Lord, help us to be strong so that if somebody does do something negative to us, that we can rise above it. For those that are older and seeking their, you for their direction, I pray you speak to them direction for colleges, direction for uh, careers and vocations. I pray, Lord, for those, Lord, that... Uh, really want a boyfriend or a girlfriend, I pray you give them temperance and help them with self-control. Lord, I just pray you set this year up to be an awesome year for these kids. And we bless them with every spiritual blessing. Help them do well in their studies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you guys. We truly do. Thank you very much. You can go back and have a seat. Let's give these guys a hand. At this time, I'm going to call up all the kids, not kids, the, the adults that are going to college and career age, or you're, maybe you're going to say, I'm not going to college, but that, that 17, 18, or, or you're out of high school up to age 21, 22, and you're seeking direction in your life. If you're going to college, you're just up to 21, 22 years old, will you come forward? And we're going to pray over you. Oh my goodness, this is like a, you would think as scholarly we are with all these kids, we'd be a really smart church. We must be. You know, I was, I was looking at pictures, I got a little sentimental yesterday, I was looking at pictures on my computer of the old church and such, and we have a lot of pictures of these, some of these kids back in the old church basement. And like, for instance, uh, Sawyer and Chad and 
Hannah, we need to get you guys a t-shirt that says Church Basement Survivor. <laughs> but uh, you guys, have, I've watched, had the privilege for most of you watching you grow, and it's an honor. And some of you are going to college for the very first time. Some of you are going back, going to be a junior, going to be a senior. Uh, and some of you are pursuing advanced degrees, really smart. Geez, you got a pilot here, a nurse, a veterinarian, zoologist, missionary. Gee whiz, smart kids, computer engineer, of cyber terrorism fighter guy. <laughs> um, listen, you guys, it, it, it's gotten real for you. It's all about getting money right now and getting enough sleep and trying to figure out who you are and what you're going to do when you get out. And in Jesus' name, you're going to make enough to justify the cost of college. <laughs> So let's pray for you, and uh, I'm also going to pray because some of you really are at that place where God may be revealing your mate in the very near future, okay? And we need to pray for direction for that, and we need to pray. I'm praying for financial blessing, and let's get those student loans reduced and, and get all the scholarships you can, and uh, let's just believe God that when you come out, you're going to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Okay, so Father, we come before you on behalf of these young adults, and once again, it's a privilege to be their brother, and for all these folks to be their brothers and sisters in Christ. We just stand behind them now and ask for your favor with their professors, favor with their bosses, favor with their classmates. Help them in the quest for money that they need to have gas money, to have some McDonald's money scholarship, tuition money, whatever. We ask you to help them in their financial needs. I ask you to make a way because, Lord, sometimes the money gets tight. I pray you make a way. Help them with their car situations. But Lord, help them with their studies. Help them with their friends, Lord, because now they're choosing friends they're going to have the rest of their life. And I pray you reveal who those friends are, the real friends you want them to have. And I pray you keep them from evil. And Lord Jesus, I just ask right now, when it's time you begin to reveal their mate to them, but in the meantime, prepare them to be the mate that you want them to be. And I pray as they are going and learning so many different things, first and foremost, I pray their faith would strong, would be strong and fail not. In Jesus' name, let them be encouraged and strengthened. Amen. God bless you guys. Let's give these guys a hand. Praise God. Yeah, you, you go. We're not praying for you. <laughs> I don't have that much time left. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, I got some Bibles. They left already, didn't they? Are they st Is Cooper still here? Is Isaac here still here? Oh, my. All right. Well, come here, big guy. <laughs> this, is for, this one's for you. Come here. I got to put you up on stage so everybody can see you. Come here. All right. This, this guy right here, I see right there, is going into kindergarten and he's going into children's church today, praise God. So, yeah, let's give him a hand. And so, this is Cooper. And so, when they go and leave our, our King's Kids and Nursery Toddler program behind, they get one of these big kid Bibles right here. So, Young man, it's my honor to present to you this Bible, and I hope you read it every day, okay? All right, I'm going to pull you down. <laughs> okay. Well, praise God. You know, uh, money has a lot of different uh, um, words that it's used. You know, if you, in church, it's called an offering. If a police officer pulls you over and you have to give money, it's called a fine. If a server gives you service, it's called a tip. If you're retired and you get money, it's called pension. If you, you work for a company and you get money, it's called a salary. And if you ever get money stolen from you, it's called the IRS. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, let me just, I'm going to give you uh, seven days to Sunday, and that's kind of a little takeoff of an NFL show they do, seven days to Sunday. I just want to give you the last seven days at Soul Harvest Church, just some of the things that have been accomplished, and I want you to hear this just to know what you're a part of. Last Sunday, eight days ago, great Sunday morning service, I finished a message, I actually got done with it, which is a miracle. Um, fantastic worship. We had 15 babies in nursery last Sunday morning. 15 babies. Praise God. Then that afternoon, we had a group go out from here and minister at the Summerfield Nursing Home, and one elderly resident gave their heart to Christ last week. Amen. Then uh, we had our teen group show up, and they left for youth camp and had three days of camp, and God moved down there. Also, Sunday night, we had a party uh, for fifth and sixth grade, our vertical ministry, to get them back to school. They had, I think, 12 kids show up. And uh, th those kids, I mean, I, I stopped in and saw the party. I mean, they were having a blast. And we're, what we're doing is we're trying to give these kids everything they need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ all their life. And so from the, from the youngest in the nursery to the person in the nursing home who got saved in one day, all those lives were touched. Then on Monday, the office goes to work. There was praise practice Monday night. I could tell they practiced today, buddy, because they were on fire. Through the week, there's a lot of office work, administration. There's personal discipleship and one-on-one -on -one ministry that goes on all week long here. On Wednesday, we had an on-fire church service. On Friday, we had in the morning a salt meeting, which our, our senior citizens gather and fellowship, and someone made uh, biscuits and chocolate gravy, and I was supposed to get some, and I heard it was all gone, <laughs> probably for the best. Then we had a Celebrate Recovery meeting Friday night at 7, and our Celebrate Recovery group is doing well and strong, and they're gaining momentum, and I would just want you to know if you know anybody in this area that needs help overcoming an addiction, overcoming some type of severe hurt, Let's get them here Friday nights at 7 o'clock, every Friday night. Then Friday night, we had a men's meeting down at McCormick's Creek. And I've got to tell you, all, all, men's meetings are always good. And sometimes they're great. And the, for, this past Friday night, it was just borderlined on a great meeting. We just had a time of encouragement and fellowship. It was really a blessing to be a part of that. And then Saturday morning, you heard what we did with the backpacks. And... Over, I forget how many hundred that were filled here just for the Cloverdale School District from the local churches, but I know we'd filled 91 of those ourselves. That's the last seven days of ministry here. And that's not counting all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Right now, as we speak, or over the week, there's preparations being made for Fall Fest. It's going to be the best Fall Fest ever. There's preparations as we speak being made for our kids' Christmas pageant, our candlelight services. Behind the scenes, there's, we're prepping for our veterans' outreach this September with, with Brother Tim Grisham and ministering to all sorts of Vietnam veterans up in Kokomo. There were many pastoral visits, cards, prayers, and help sent out all in the last seven days, seven days to Sunday. And I just say all that to encourage you. One of the reasons why we give, and, and Malachi said it, bring your, bring your tithe into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house, says the Lord. And one of the reasons we give is very simply this, to do, that there's funding to do the work of the ministry. And we're in a place where from the baby in the nursery to the senior citizen that's been forgotten about or the person with Huntington's disease that's been forgotten about in the nursing home, we're here for this community. For the wealthy, for the poor, for the married, for the hurting from a divorce, this church is here. And I would want you to know and ask you to be faithful in your giving because we're being faithful to preach the gospel with it. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much for that. And because we have six minutes left, I don't think it matters which sermon I choose. I, I, I want to just make a point. And if you want to read an entire book of the Bible later today, you can read the entire book in one chapter. It's called Philemon. 
okay? And it's over there right before uh, Hebrews. And um, Philemon in the Bible is a one-chapter book of the Bible. And in this chapter, Paul is admonishing a brother named Philemon, or Philemon as I used to call him before I got educated. And Philemon was a, big, a, a businessman. He, he was a wealthy man. And at that time, there was a slavery system in that time and that culture. Now, the slavery system that's mentioned in Scripture is nothing like the slavery system we have today. Not today, or we had in our history books today. Does that make sense? Okay, what we learned about in our history. The slavery system back then, and I'm only going to take two or three minutes on this, and then I'm going to let you go. But the system was a debt system. And the system in the, in the scriptural times was, and in the Juda, Judaism culture, was if you fell into debt and you could not pay back your debt, you would become what's called a bond slave. You would sell yourself as a bond for your debt. Okay? And you would work for the person you owed the debt to until you paid off your debt. There weren't harsh conditions. They would, depending on your family situation, uh, they would work with you for where you would live and how you'd be quartered. But the thing with a bond slave is the maximum time you were allowed to be to fill, fulfill your bond was seven years. Because every seven years in the Jewish system, they have what was called the year of Jubilee. All debts were canceled in the year of Jubilee. There would never be a 30-year mortgage in Israel. There would never be a car loan that, or a loan that lasted for more than seven years because every seven years there was a canceling of debt. And the reason they did that was to keep the system of man that the rich get richer and the poor get poor. You know, one or two generations ago, a man could go to work for 40 or 50 hours a week and he would be able to provide, and it was a single income family, and he would be able to provide a car and a house and a reasonably good living. And the mortgage would be 15 years. Today, the man's working 50, 60 hours a week. Sometimes the lady's working 50, 60 hours a week to make ends meet, to have the same thing. Do we have more? Yeah, we have more than we did a generation or two ago, sure. But we sure do give a lot more for it. But in that system, and even the system we're in today, we find that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. That is the world system. And the way God counteracted that was there was a seven-year jubilee that every seven years all debts were canceled. That way you could not be lifelong impoverished. Amen. Now, there's a whole set of rules that go with that. That's, that's neither here nor there. Onesimus, as mentioned in the book of Philemon, was a bond slave to Philemon. And Onesimus made a decision to escape and leave Philemon. He ran away. He did not honor his debt. And somewhere in the process, Onesimus gets born again. And, he come, and somewhere in the process, Onesimus gets born again and he meets the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul writes to Philemon and says this, I'm sending Onesimus back to you. I'm going to ask that you not treat him as a slave, but I'm going to ask that you treat him as a brother. And not only that, but if he owes you anything, put it on my account. And ladies and gentlemen, just one thing I would want you to, just I only have time for one maybe thought today as we close, is this. There are some people who've wronged you. There are some people who have hurt you. There are, and you're not going to escape this life without that happening. Luke 17, 1, Jesus said, it is impossible that no offenses would come. But in the spirit of Philemon, I would want you to know this, ladies and gentlemen, that even though somebody may have hurt, they're, they're, I mentioned this a little bit in communion, I wanted to just extend it further, but even though Somebody may have hurt you, even though somebody may not have lived up to your expectations. Maybe somebody even reneged on their word and they were a Christian. I would want you to know today 
Receive them as a brother. Receive them as a sister. And I believe you can go to the Lord Jesus Christ and if there is a debt owed you, I believe you can hear the word of the Lord saying this to you. Put it on my tab. Put it under the blood. Put it under the body of Christ and bury it and let it never rise again. Amen. You say, Pastor Matt, is that possible? It's not easy, but it's possible. And the only way you're ever going to break free from torments and chains and from being a victim of what anybody does to you is by being able to say, I'm going to embrace you as a brother and I'm gonna take the debt you owe me and I'm gonna put it on Jesus' tab. Amen. Is that an easy way to live? No. That is the high road. But it's the right way to live. It's the God way to live. And Jesus said this, he said, you know how they're gonna know you're, that you're my disciples? Not because you carry a Bible that's eight feet long. Not because you like to argue scripture. You know how they're gonna know that you're my disciples? By your love for one another. Now I do need to be done. Talk about not even getting off the runway. <laughs> and if you came today and, and you don't have children that got prayed for, maybe today you didn't get a great message for right where you're at, but at the same time, can I ask you to please be in faith over these kids? Because they need all of us. Because it's tough to be them. And let's all of us pull together with our faith for these kids and pray over them as if they were our very own. Amen? So we need to be dismissed today. Didn't hear a whole sermon, but you've been in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. So let's pray and be dismissed. What am I doing? You think Isaac came in. So now you're making me stop everything. Uh, you just know it's all right. All right. Is Isaac in here? Isaac? Oh, there he is, right there. Come here, buddy. Come here. I'm going to come down to you. All right. This is our other young man, Isaac, who is graduating our king's kids and, and toddlers. Oh, my goodness. And nursery. And he's going into our children's church. Was supposed to be today, but he got sprung. Okay. So, buddy, thank you for being here. We are giving you this Bible. This Look, all those people are scary, aren't they? You should try preaching to them. They're really mean. Okay. This is your Bible. I'm giving this to you, and I want you to read it every day. Okay? There's some awesome stories in here. I'm going to change your life and help you to become the young man God's called you to be. We love you, and we're glad you're here. All right? So this is for you. Thank you for coming today. Big guy. Now let's pray. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. It's an awesome day that you've made. We rejoice again in the body and the blood of the Lord. We thank you for sending, trusting us with your little lambs. And we ask you to bless this congregation as they go in spirit, soul, and body. Amen. I'm going to have prayer partners up here. If you need prayer for any reason, please come forward for prayer. I'll see you out there. Well, hi there. I'm Pastor Matt. I just want to take this moment and say thank you so much for tuning in to the ministry of Soul Harvest Church Online. And it's a privilege to minister to you each and every time. And I just want to invite you to be a living and active part of our vision to touch the world from West Central Indiana. And if you've been blessed by our ministry, I would ask you to very strongly consider sowing into our ministry to provide that our ministry would continue to go deeper and wider to impact people just like you all around this world that cost the precious blood of Jesus. So I would appreciate a gift of any amount. And, and I would ask if you're on YouTube, click the link below. If you're online on our website, click a, a Give Online. Or if you're on our app, hit the Give Online tab, and it'll take you through a couple easy steps, and you'd be able to sow. And we just pray God's richest blessing on you today. Thank you. God is good. His word is true. And it works in your life, friend.